of the top three running backs taken in the top ten of fantasy scoring. That's after three weeks. That's also in the past. We're here to help you with the future and what you can do now that one of those three, Steven Jackson, is out for week four. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horwitz. Glad to be with you on the Fantasy Football Series. It's who's hot and who's not. We'll get to Steven Jackson and his injury and move makers this week. That comes your way starting on Wednesday. We'll see if anybody else on the Rams has any value at all. But let's get to the topics at hand. And for more, we bring in Dave Richards, CBSSports.com senior fantasy writer from Miami. And uh, Dave, before we get to sports of any kind, I want to go off topic a little bit here. You're the father of one, about to be the father of two. And I hear in your email box, you're not just asking for fantasy questions, you're also requesting daughters' names to go along with uh. those questions. <laughs> that, that may be true. We're looking for an H initial and a G initial <laughs> after members of my, my family and my wife's family. So if anybody's got any good girl names, send them over to us at CBSSports.com. All right, we'll, we'll get those as we get you throughout the, throughout the year here. We'll, we'll play those names. We'll get the best ones on the air. All right, let's, let's get to fantasy football here, who's hot and who's not. And certainly there is a hot quarterback in Arizona, but it's not Matt Leinart. It's Kurt Warner who replaced our cold quarterback, who is Matt Leinart. Now, Ken Wisenhunt has said that Leinart should be the starter this coming Sunday. Having said that, if he is the starter, assuming he is the starter, can you count on the skill position? Of course you can count on these skill position players. They got it done last year when Matt Leiner was the quarterback. They're going to do it again this year. Bolden and Fitzgerald each have put up decent numbers so far through the first three weeks of the season. I know that they did better with Warner, a quarterback in week three. Frankly, I think both these wide receivers are still low-end number one, top-end number two type of fantasy wideouts. Go ahead and keep starting them. If you've got Matt Leiner, it's a whole different kettle of fish because if you've got him, now you got to worry about Kurt Warner taking reps. There's going to be a quarterback by committee type of thing going on in Arizona. When they fall behind, Warner's going to come in, have them throw to get back in the game. Well, it's also the world as the world turns in uh, in uh, Baltimore as well with McNair and Bowler, uh, the the combination there as well. Uh, any effect there on the wideouts? Not like they have a number one wideout anyway. But if you have any of those wideouts, Derek Mason, maybe one, Todd Heap as Derek the Mason. other. Derek Mason, yeah. one, Todd Heap. If you're playing those guys, uh, do you how closely do you watch this Kyle Bowler-Steve McNair situation? Well, first of all, if you're talking about Derek Mason not being a number one, all right, fine, he's not a number one, but he's getting targeted like a number one wide receiver. Has put up nice stats. He's still a free agent in a lot of leagues at CBSSports.com. So check to see if he's out there, especially if you need a wide receiver for your team. Of course, Todd Heap's taken in just about every league. I would definitely keep an eye on this. McNair has not been effective, been more of a game manager than a quarterback. Bowler's been more of a quarterback than a game manager. we got to see how it shakes out in Baltimore. Frankly, I liked Kyle Bowler a lot when he came out in the draft. I'd like to see him get a shot to run that offense. Yeah, he seems like he's throwing the ball with a lot more confidence this year. I, also sure. in Baltimore, you know, Willis McGay, he hasn't been as explosive as the Ravens have hoped, but uh, still good enough as a number two back so far, but not nearly as hot as some other guys. Brian Westbrook, the highest scoring running back in standard scoring leagues, not just in week three, but on the season. Lamont Jordan, Marion Barber, they're tied for second. Not just a touchdown guy, I'm talking about Barber, his rushing yards this season have gone from 65 to 89 to over 100 this past week. So we know he's becoming the feature back in Dallas, especially now that Julius Jones continues to have the concussion problems. But what about Lamont Jordan, Dave? Because clearly uh, when Dominique Rhodes comes back in week six, when, when they're off the bye and he comes back from suspension, what happens in the backfield in Oakland? You said a mouthful there, Jason, because <laughs> when Dominique Rhodes comes back, there is going to be a split. Dominique Rhodes wasn't signed by the Oakland Raiders this offseason to sit there on the bench and watch Lamont Jordan run. Maybe Jordan's play early this season is going to influence him playing a lot more than Dominique Rhodes, but the bottom line here is that if you've got Lamont Jordan and you don't want to trade him, you're in love with what he's giving you, that's fine. Make a trade for Dominique Rhodes. He should be available on somebody's bench. Shouldn't cost that much. Maybe you give up a wide receiver on your bench. Pick up Dominique Rhodes, bring him in your team, have that depth just in case things change in Oakland at running back. And at about 25% of CBSSports.com leagues, he's available as a free agent as well. So you could, yeah. you could also possibly get Dominique Rhodes as a free agent. All right. Uh, that's what about, the best way to go get him. Well, that would be <laughs> drop somebody you're yeah, never going to play. That's the easiest. <laughs> yeah. one, other, one other running back to get to, and that's Deshaun Foster. Had a great week three against Atlanta. Uh, but he's never been consistent in his career. Any reason to believe he will be this season? Well, you know, everybody wanted to see D'Angelo Williams become the man in Carolina, and it just kind of turned out that Deshaun Foster did better in the preseason, and that's carried on into the regular season. 
He's a little injury prone, but you know what, Jason? He gives you rushing yards, gives you receiving yards. It looks like he's going to be there in short yardage goal line situations for the Panthers. Deshaun Foster's really turned into a number two fantasy running back, and he's he's been talented. It's just that the consistency issue, just like you said, hasn't been working out. Owners need to be careful with him. You don't want to put him in there when he's playing against good run defenses. But otherwise, start him. Use him as a number two. Ride him while you can. All right, one last topic, Dave, and that's hot wide receivers. And there were a couple this past weekend. Kevin Curtis uh, had just a, a monster game, 221 yards, 11 catches, and three touchdowns. And Roddy White, who didn't score in all of 2006, had a touchdown, 127 yards. His yardage has gone up each week. Dave, do mm -hmm. you think either or both will stay hot? Well, you know, Kevin Curtis goes out there, puts up 200 receiving yards and three touchdowns. And you know what, Jason? Don't get him. Roddy White is the one to get. He's a third-year wide receiver. Atlanta is going to be passing nonstop this season. We know they're going to be behind in a lot of games. We know that that's a high-powered pass-oriented offense. Look for White to post better stats than Kevin Curtis in 2007. Both are worth a pickup off the waiver wire, but I think you'll be using White more often than you will Curtis. All right, in our league, that's exactly what I went after was the Roddy White deal, so we'll see how that works. <laughs> Dave, we will get see, to plenty. smart. No, I, li I listen to you. I'm, this is the third year. I understand what's going on now. Dave, I will get to you on Move Makers. We'll talk about uh, who guys you think uh, that maybe have some good trade value. That's right. And everybody out there, Jason Orwitz is getting married. He's got a lovely fiance named Karen. If you've got any wedding theme ideas, go ahead and email those to CBSSports.com, too. I know he and Karen would love to have them. All right. I'm glad it goes around and comes around. <laughs> Dave, we'll talk to you soon. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, Jason. All right, folks, that'll do it for this edition of Who's Hot and Who's Not. But for the latest in waiver wire moves, and as I said, guys, for Dave to trade and what to do with the Chicago Bears, We'll talk about that in Movemaker. For Dave Richard, I'm Jason Horowitz. Be sure to watch everything all over the CBS Audience Network. Take care.